All right, guys, so now it's on to the final chapter. Final chapter? Sure. Just about. Yeah, we'll call it that. Let's go with that. Diff is upended. The pinion preload is set. Feels really nice. As Ben said, hopefully the little 2L has enough power to turn it. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll definitely do something about that soon. Turns the center pop side, this one. Okay, so this one goes with this side. This one goes with this side. So as you probably saw in the disassembly video, if you watched that, if not, go check that out if you're interested. These caps, I think I mentioned this at the beginning, but it's been so long I forgot. Um, make sure you center pop it or mark it. Center popping is the best because paint can rub off. Um, because these are line honed and they are specific to each one. Oh, you have to move those caps. Okay, so when we fit these up, um, one of them uses the standard Toyota one, the other one uses a um, ARB specialized, specially modified um, adjuster nut due to the sealing assembly on the end here. So, uh, one of the factory ones will be discarded. The other thing I do is I use the threads of the adjuster to help line the top cap on. That's why I've set it up like this. Uh, the other thing I've done is uh, already coated the bores of the housing with the mounting paste and also the threads because it helps them move nice and smoothly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen it a million times. <laughs> if you don't have it, you can use a bit of grease or anti-seize or something like that on the threads. Um, maybe just at best light lithium grease on the bores. Okay, let's go find some adjusters. These two locking things. This. This. Don't. It was about this time. You want the cap, cap bolt? Yeah. It was about this time last year that I forgot to put that retaining clip on. Yeah. <laughs> After that fucking monster, like. Maybe, know, maybe fatigue. 18 hour build. Maybe fatigue management is a thing. Anyways. Okay, so we've got our factory. It's only um, fatigue if you accept it. <laughs> but like insanity or alcoholism or. Yeah. Okay, let's try not to say anything too controversial. So we've put out all our parts down here. Just gonna um, put some mounting paste on this as well. Okay, so I've got the bearings roughly centered. I'm just gonna place these. Doesn't have to be hard up against it, but we wanna make sure that the threads are engaged properly. So does that look like okay? That looks good. That's good. All right, uh, in the ARB kit, you get two adjusters. Uh, they're different size, they're different diameters, so you want to pick the right one. And there's the crucial spring clip. Hmm. So, I will cover what the spring clip I think the like. best best word of advice for this would be, don't do it at this time of morning or night. Trust us, we've done it twice at this time and it's not recommended. Although, we finished at 6 a.m. on yours. <laughs> You could definitely not do it. Took it, it for a drive. That's it, it went good. And then you literally went and did a whole nother day pulling an engine and That's it. towing it and. Gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, crazy man. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, keep the energy up for the fans. <laughs> All right, so here's, <laughs> here you can see that the two adjusters are different sizes. <laughs> I think we're just losing the plot. <laughs> Alright, so different size adjuster. Uh, I try not to mix it up. So this is a smaller one. I'm going to put that back so I don't get confused. Okay. And I'm, just, I'm just looking at all the tools I've got out. I'm like, fuck, I've got to do all that before I go home. Sorry, uh, go on. Anyways, <laughs> that's the factory one. Um, so you can see that's the same size there. Cool. Yep. And Very cool. So you can see uh, this is a modified uh, ARB one to give room for the seal carrier. So I'll let you guys in on a little secret while Ben's doing that. Um, 
I may or may not have picked up a front locker as well. <laughs> so, You're on your own on that one. Ben, yeah. <laughs> I, I know he actually wants to do it because he hasn't done a clamshell one before. Um, hasn't done a front locker before, so we'll see you soon. I'm so privileged that you able to provide me Mate, that opportunity. Mate, who was the one that linked me to it? Oh, or was it Brett? No, I'll take responsibility. Uh, See, I'll take look, the, he, he linked me to that. I'll, I'll take responsibility for He might have linked me to this. Yeah. And the front locker. And several other things which I've had to decline because I just can't <laughs> keep buying unnecessary shit. So, now you can light these threads to help you line the top ups. Bubs, top ups, <laughs> tops ups. We need a top up. Fucking <laughs> out. Now we will lock tight those as well. And feel free to point out viewers if we haven't. Carl oh, we won't be too happy to pull it, pull this whole assembly out again. <laughs> Alright Benny, so how do you convert the readings they've given you to kilo? Uh, At 2 a.m. Very carefully. Um, uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, Leon's insurance. 1.64 newton meters, so it's newton times meters. Um, so the force should decrease as the distance gets bigger. So we got 5.5 centimeters. So point zero. Five, five, five centimeters, fifty centimeters, five hundred centimeters. Yeah, five, five. The <laughs> point point six four divided by point oh five five. Thirty kilos. That doesn't seem like right. That doesn't seem right. Force times distance. No. Uh, then divide by nine point eight one. Gravity. Three kilos. <laughs> We're almost there, it needs to go. Yeah, now. we're at about two kilos now. Yeah. Luckily, with the power of the Ugga Dugga, we can bypass that. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> it hurts, it's getting down to my knees. It's right at the back too. <laughs> oh, I've got to go to work in a few hours. Concern if I lie down, I might not actually get back <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, I would be concerned. Oh. <laughs> you get it? Yep. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna. Like pass it out on the floor. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're good. We're good. I've we got this. No, no, no. We got this. We got this. Okay, so a quick blast with the dagger. Just on the three. Oop. Oh, the rope's caught a little bit. Just three and a half. Just over three. Just on three. All right. Done. That's all she wrote. That's all she did. <laughs> That's all good. that could be done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'll pan that in and uh, flip her over and get to the other bit. All right, so the cap bolts have got lock fight on them. Time to talk them down. Stop cuddling my diff. <laughs> it's funny. So what we have to do now is um, adjust this in to get the right backlash. So backlash spec is 0 0.18, 13 to 18 millimeters. And point, your motive, point 0.1. Yep. Fuck. When I stripped my diff down, it had like 1.8 mil. So it would have been something like that. So while Ben's doing this, for those of you who don't know, backlash is basically how close the ring gear is to the pinion gear. So how deep into the root, uh, that's the root there, how deep um, the 
gears are. So obviously the further apart they are, the more lash you're gonna get. So half the point of these adjusters, other than setting preload, is you can basically move that across and tweak the backlash. Mm, 0.82, pretty close. Is that it, 0.82? Yeah, that's still a lot. It's meant to be 0.1. That seems like eight. heaps. Like it feels like heaps. It's pretty close to being tangent, so okay. it's quite nice. So we've got to basically wind it over. Yeah. So, um, if we're a bit more prepared, we would have made up a special tool for that, but in the absence of that, I have this. <laughs> this, because I'm right-handed. Why don't you use your left hand? Because I'm not special. The thing you gotta keep in mind is you also have to keep this um, yeah. backed off so that Picture this. One, two, five. One, one five. One and a half. Oh, no, actually, sorry. No, you're right, one point two five. One two five. So one revolution is 1.25. Um, so if we go half a revolution, it's 0.6. So we probably want to take about 0.6 off. So half a rev. So if I just make an arbitrary So mark technical, like Ben. I love it. The one on the other side is going to be about here. That's how much we've got to move. I'll make sure this is backed off at least half a turn and then we'll bring it back in to um, zero the preload. So that's there. I'll leave that at least half a turn, probably three quarters just to make sure. Because I don't want to I don't want to set the preload. What I want to do is drive the whole assembly over and then preload it. Yeah, so basically preload it off this one back that way. No, I want to set the backlash with this one. No, but once you've set the backlash, yeah, you'll then preload pre it back that way. Yeah, against this yeah. one. So I'll set the backlash a little tight and then drive the preload in from the other side. So if you're going to be hacked like this, at least be decent hack. Try to keep the thing tangent so that the force is driving it around rather than burring up the end. So that's 0.34. So I'll go two notches and see what happens. Two five. So I'm gonna halve that. That's pretty pretty decent there. So that's one three. Now I'm gonna wind the other adjuster up until it's zeroed. So that's a light tap this time. So that should be zero. I've got my one three. So the manual says that the correct preload for this diff carrier bearing is roughly one to one and a half. Um, so there's the reference line, reference to the zero, because there's a retaining clip that comes down. We're about there, so there to there is half, and there to there is one, so I want that one lined up here. Want that one? Please, sir. One five to one six. That's pretty decent. Okay, so now we need to check total preload. Um, actually, see here where we've ended up is just shy of one notch. So this uh, locking tab comes down from here. So. Now we make a decision, if we want to increase preload, we tighten it, and if we want to decrease preload and also make it bigger, we loosen it one. Hmm. What I reckon is we just check the preload um, before we make a call on this one here. And that little ticket might be just what we need, so 2.8, 2.7, 2.8. Okay, so we'll back that half a turn. 2.1. Two point three, beautiful. That's that. Wow, we! I never thought I'd see the end. Oh, it's not, not over yet. Not done yet. yet. <laughs> it's not over till that last fucking little seal goes on there. All right, so Loctite on there. Yep. Was it thirteen newtons? Thirteen newtons. Okay, still good. Oh, well, point one five on the lashometer. Yep. No, uh, no, point one eight. 0.18, sorry. Which is, which is what the, um, it's the, the spec that overlaps between what the gear guys want and what Toyota want. Yep. So 
I'm just going to clean the anti corrosive oil off this bit. So this is virtually the final step, apart from putting it back in the car. Uh, putting this on, getting the seal. I think we'll the retaining be, clip. The retaining. Well, what I plan to do is fit the seal and the retaining clip, and then deal with these hydraulics another time. Because you've got to size up the right length and cut it off, and you want it to run it really. You really need to run it in a really sensible position. If you run it too close to the gears, the gear will wear a hole through it. And if you let it stick out too much, when you mount it in the car, it will stick out too far, and then the gear will wear a hole in it. If you, if you change your um, oil and you just see brassy bits coming out, you'll know that it's It's time to pull the diff out. <laughs> yeah, fortunately it's not too hard, but um, yeah, it's nothing you, not something you want to do or have it finally wear through and you're no, out somewhere. Well, it's not fun on these because you've got to take the actual, um, yeah, the actual wheel cylinder off or disconnect it from the brake line, which is a pain in the ass. We need to move this show onto seats now. <laughs> seats? <Fuck>. Beds. Oh, <laughs> live broadcast from my bed. Okay, so I'm just checking that that sits and clears nicely. Next step is to um, grab some axle oil and provision the seals, which I've just lost, but then found again. <laughs> Where's the axle oil? I can't even talk anymore. <laughs> You know when they say for, when you're fatigued, it's the same as being drunk. I'm not this bad when I'm drunk. So guys, what do you reckon? I've literally got to be up in another two hours. Should I just push through? Or should I go to bed, try to get like three hours sleep? Fuck, I don't know, because I want to sleep so bad. Uh, I reckon treat yourself to a bacon egg roll at 5.30. This is every diff that we do for my cars is a car. What's the common denominator? This common de <laughs> what? Common <laughs> denominator. <laughs> so there's a top tip that I came up with. You know, I always get good ideas when I've had a couple of drinks and when I've stayed up a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's a, he's up a couple of drinks and up a couple of days. Maybe it's one of those things where uh, you know drinking is the same as fatigue. Anyway, <laughs> let's stop prattling on. <laughs> just rambling. Maybe old people are just really fatigued. That's why they ramble so much. <laughs> well, they probably are. That's Man, why they sleep so much it's, too. It's, it's tired getting to eighty. <laughs> it's tiring. All right, so a little top trick there. I had the two oil um, biton seals in the bag. I just put a little bit of axle oil in there, and then I put my finger into that and licked it. <laughs> Tasted like sulfur. All right, so I've just lubed up the um, the seals, which is really important. I'm also going to put a bit of axle oil, or the oil that we're going to run in, just here to help it lead on, and. Uh, now be really really careful when you put this on there's only a tiny chamfer on there you don't want to roll a lip or tear it push it in and how many numpties do you reckon have torn the seal well I, look i think it's something that you have to be really careful about uh, because if you just try to walk it on you'll twist the seal and right there you you'll feel if it's good but yeah, be really, really careful. And there's a lot of stories out there on the net how airlockers are shit and they've been back three, four times to refit the seal. Definitely, if you have the original O-ring cord seal, get the um, X section, which is what we fitted here. And, um, you know, you really have to lube it up and just carefully walk it on. And if that, if that surface is scored up, then of course you're gonna have to do something to clean it up. So normally we would leave it here and then we'd shoot another video about pulling it all apart to fit this clip. But I think we've banged on long enough, so let's just fit the clip. Yep. And this ring goes from here all the way around to there. Okay, so I'm just gonna slice that on. There we go. Bloody lovely. And there we are. One brand new ARB locker fitted with brand new hardware 
Brand new gears. Brand new paint. Brand new paint. Use Didn't reuse really the paint. <laughs> <laughs> um, so last thing to be careful about is when you're fitting this, try to have the route planned where you want it because you don't want to overly manipulate it. If you crack it there, it's going to be a real pain in the butt. Um, the other thing is, of course, just check this flange here before it goes back in. See, it's a little bird up there, so just a file to take off those burrs. The gasket that fits on this flange only fits one way. Ooh, yes. So um, trial fit that. It's easier to trial fit it before all this hardware goes on. When we've all had a bit of sleep, what we'll do is... So, did you drill the thing on the right side? It's over here. The bulkhead fits. Oh no, did I? Yeah, it's on the right side. I drilled where you marked. Oh, I see. I'm the contractor. <laughs> so I'm going to do that another Arvo when I've had sleep. <laughs> and then I'll chuck it in. So you guys will see that just like you know, that. But in the meantime, big thank you to Benny for <laughs> the fucking ball overnight. And morning. Oh, there you are. There you are. Um, final comments. It's a brand new gear set, so um, run the run good oil, change it after it's run in. Not too much crazy stuff until it's bedded in. Uh, one last check, which we do need to do, is paint the uh, teeth and get a pattern. And should we do that now quickly? Absolutely. Yeah. And regardless of the pattern, I'm still going to sleep. Soon. <laughs> Alright guys, a bit of bearing blue on a few of the teeth. You can use a paint marker, we've done that before. It's not the best. So it kind of dries I guess. And yeah, it dries pretty quick. There's not enough friction to actually knock it off. Alright, she's going to be spot on mate. Okay, so both sides of the gear. Depends like no comment. I <laughs> have <laughs> regardless. So, We'll just wind it through. Sometimes you got to put a bit of extra torque on it just to um, get it to leave a mark. Okay, drive it back the other way. I'm just going to load it up a bit. A little bit on there. Actually, it looks a little low. All right, so our mark is slightly higher than centre, but it, I think it's pretty good. You can kind of see there, guys. Just going to roll this around a bit more. Some of that yellow on here. Oh, yeah, plenty of yellow on there. See, if you have a look at the pattern down there now, that's, that's transferred. Looks pretty decent. Yeah, let's fucking pack up. Let's get this, get this schmozzle cleaned up. Alright, guys. To be continued. Wow, guys. What a fucking morning and night that was. So it's now. Monday the next week, we've got a public holiday. Um, ben and I are still recovering from that massive mission. Ben's off to Germany um, next week or in a few days, I think. Um, that's why we had to push to get this thing done, because we've got the dyno literally next weekend. Um, so, there's only one thing left to do, and that is, well, there's a few things left to do. So this is where the diff's at. So it's all set up, as you remember seeing, like. 20 seconds ago. Um, ben obviously couldn't sleep that night and he messaged me and he's like, man, I think we need to take a bit more lash out of that. So I'm gonna um, just reduce the back lash a little bit more just by winding them as you saw before. I won't bore you with that. Um, basically just gotta wrap this copper line through this little barb here, which you also saw. And then we can put it back in the diff housing. So I'm gonna quickly get to that, get the gasket all um, loctited with the anaerobic sealant, the 518, and then we'll slap this puppy back in the car. All right guys, so I've got the backlash. Um, I took it closer by one, uh, one tooth on the adjuster and that became 0.08 mil. Uh, and then I went one more to see what that would do and that was 0.03. So I've backed it back to 0.08. Um, where well, we've got a a small amount of backlash, but it's still good. So the only thing left to do now is run this copper line, which basically runs across here, somewhat level, and then down through this bung. And then we put this little crush washer or O-ring in there. So I'm gonna do that now. 
and then uh, Brett's just got here as well, so we'll chuck this back in the car and get all the rear end back together. Guys, so Brett's here, as you can see, lurking, lurking there. Um, time to put this in. Oh, need to snip this as well. Fucking hell, man. Fuck. Good thing I'm by the hour. I don't even know where my shit is. All right, guys, so um, a lot of people would probably put this in dry. You probably could, especially if it's prepped as well as mine is, but I always like to use anaerobic because you've probably seen throughout the whole build and a lot of my other stuff. So, YouTube of this stuff, um, as you remember, Ben labeled this um, the right direction. So, we've got top and A, I can't remember, top axle. Fuck, I can't remember. <laughs> Cleverly put on there. Right. And also another pointer, if you've taken your studs out to clean uh, this mounting face, which I did, the two longer studs go as you're looking at the thing on the top right and bottom right, basically. Next so, to those little cutouts. Yes. So these are torqued to 47 Newton meters. Guys, that's it. And as you saw, marking them with a the paint marker, both to say that they're done, and also I can see if they ever move. So, next up, tail shaft on, which is pretty straightforward. And for the rear wheel bearings, you can check that out in another video. And of course, guys, the only last thing to do is run your airline, so it's pretty straightforward, literally. Um, it helps to put the hose in some hot water, heat up the end so it's a bit more malleable slip it onto the, actually before you do that, you wanna make sure you got your tube nut on the hose and also your spring. And then push the hose on, tube nut, tighten it down, check that it's in tight, and then you slip your spring over the top here. This is a bit close for my liking, but um, it's okay, that'll be fine. That's only gonna be like that on full droop. Once the car is at ride height, this sway bar will actually drop down. Um, so yeah, I've just got to run this to my compressor when I set that up, but that's not actually set up right now, so I'm just going to gather it up somewhere there and worry about it later. So anyway guys, I'm going to put these rear wheels back in. Um, be sure to check out my rear wheel, uh, wheel, be sure to check out my rear wheel bearing video if you haven't already. Um, and also if you wanted to see how to strip that diff down beforehand, I did a video on that as well. Um, Definitely worth watching if you're doing this yourself, just to get a bit of a idea. But, you know, it's all done. Hopefully it all works. I should have actually tested that locker before I put it in, but, oh. So yeah, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos on this car.